Katie Giroux, and I am a senior marketing communications specialist with Ecolab Pest Elimination. I will be the moderator for today's webinar, What Makes a Good Fumigation Partner? We appreciate all of you taking the time to attend today. We'll be discussing key factors that should be considered when choosing a fumigation partner. But before we begin, I would like to go through a few housekeeping notes. So all attendees will be muted throughout the duration of the webinar. And then we will conduct a Q&A session at the end of today's webinar. So I'd like to encourage you to type in questions you may have by leveraging the chat feature located on the right-hand side of the Vimeo platform. So now I will hand it over to our presenters to introduce themselves. Brian? Good, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Brian Racine. I'm a corporate account manager with Ecolab Pest Elimination, and, and my role is to really be one point of contact at a corporate level for some of our large food and beverage processing customers. Um, many of those customers in which have, have significant fumigation needs that uh, I help support and coordinate. Uh, I've been with Ecolab for 12 years, uh, about seven years as a corporate account manager. I've uh, been fortunate enough to uh, be recognized as Ecolab's corporate account manager of the year in 2017 and Ecolab's culture award winner in 2019. Uh, I've got a, a bachelor's degree from Coastal Carolina University and uh, on my free time, I uh, really just enjoy uh, doing anything outside uh, with my wife and our one-year-old son uh near lake michigan uh here in chicago so jake good morning my name is uh, jacob henderson i'm the business development manager for ecolab specialty pest services and fumigation team i cover most of the southern region i am a proud u.s army veteran and i studied business at the university of colorado in denver uh, when i'm not busy with work i enjoy traveling with my wife and my kids um, in 2020, I was Ecolab Sales Development Manager of the Year for the Southeastern Region, and I am part of the team that currently holds the record for the largest fumigation in North American history. I take safety very seriously, and I'm always researching the newest and greatest fumigants. Um, I'm a huge Georgia Bulldogs fan. Uh, go dogs! And let's get started with this webinar uh, with my partner, Brian. Perfect. Thanks, Jake. Um, so, so as Katie mentioned, uh, everyone, during today's webinar, we're going to discuss some key factors that should be considered when you're evaluating a fumigation partner for your facility or for your organization, really regardless of the industry that you're in. Um, some of those key factors you see listed here on the screen, um, like safety and expertise, but we'll even spend some time reviewing best practices and some other solutions that may not be standard for a fumigation company to provide, but are really important for you to be aware of. Uh, we wanna make sure you get the most out of your time today, as Katie mentioned, so um, you know, please submit those questions through the chat as we're going through, um, and we'll make sure to allow uh, time at the end to answer those questions. So uh, what is fumigation for those that, that may not be aware? Um, really, to, to put it simply, uh, fumigation is a highly technical gas application that targets all life stages of insects and pests uh, and doesn't leave a residual after the treatment. It, it's a really critical tool to help keep ingredients and food safe uh, throughout the supply chain. So, um, before we get started today, just let me tell you a little bit briefly about uh, Ecolab uh, Specialty Pest Services. So um, Ecolab has nationwide coverage uh, with highly trained associates conducting fumigation services across the, the food value chain. Uh, we fumigate anything from uh, cargo ships, import export containers, grain or commodity storage facilities, warehouses, uh, manufacturing facilities, et cetera. So um, really no matter where you are in, in the food value chain, um, all fumigation requires detailed planning, coordination and communication between the customer and the fumigator. So um, that's what really makes a good partnership really critical. 
and uh, what we'll be talking about here today. So we understand that, that all industries are gonna have some unique fumigation needs, right? Um, for, for instance, you know, a flour milling facility is gonna have some unique needs that a ready to eat food and beverage manufacturing facility won't have or a commodity uh, storage facility won't have. However, uh, the presentation today is gonna focus on a lot of the commonalities that really all industries have when uh, they should be uh, choosing and selecting a fumigation partner. And you see a lot of those commonalities listed here on the screen. Uh, for, first and foremost, you know, employee and food safety is, is a top priority uh, when, when evaluating a, a fumigation partner. And an accurate pest identification is, is extremely critical. Uh, reason being that accurate pest identification really dictates the proper dosage that needs to be used um, during the fumigation treatment to target and uh, effectively treat all life stages of the insect and really take the correct approach um, during the fumigation treatment itself. In the middle of the screen there, you see uh, brand protection, obviously protecting your reputation, your brand to both your customers, consumers, and suppliers is, is critical. Uh, we'll talk a lot today about partnership and communication, um, which is really important to make sure that a fumigation is successful. And then last but not least, you know, proper documentation, not only for regulatory compliance, but also audit readiness. Um, so we'll discuss some of these key things to look for when, when you're evaluating a fumigation partner um, to support these needs and also the important role that you play uh, preparing for a successful treatment at, at the facility level. So uh, now I'll turn it over to Jake to review these topics in a little bit more detail. I appreciate you, Brian. Um, first thing we're going to talk about is uh, prioritizing uh, safety and compliance. The fumigation company you choose should always put safety and compliance with applicable laws, all laws, local, state, and federal laws, um, and regulations at the forefront of everything they do. Uh, why is that important? For one, if not completed properly, the fumigation process can be a very dangerous one as fumigants have many risks from inhalation hazards to fire risks, just a few. A well-trained fumigation team will alleviate your pest issues without causing you a legal issue by not following these applicable laws and regulations. Fumigation is just one tool in the tool bag and should be part of an IPM, Integrated Pest Management Program. The question, why are we fumigating, should always be asked. We will touch on this in just a little bit. A reputable fumigation company should be able to conduct training sessions for its customers to help them better understand the fumigation process. They should offer stewardship training, which is training over specific fumigants. For any companies that do smaller in-house fumigations, such as containers or small grain bins. Your fumigation company should understand regulatory requirements and have the proper permits and licensing for the job at hand. A licensed fumigator must be on site for the fumigation at the start and when aeration begins. Your whole fumigation team should consist of highly trained employees that are trained and licensed to do your fumigation work. Again, safety should always be at the forefront of everything that your fumigation company does. And excellent training leads to excellent safety. Proper PPE should always be worn and all licenses should be up to date. Annual stewardships should have been completed and equipment calibration certifications should all be up to date. Always remember the fumigant label is the law. In other trades, you may hear the term, use the right tool for the job. The phrase rings true for the fumigation industry as well. As fumigators, our tools are our fumigants and our application techniques. This goes back to the previously asked question, why are we fumigating? Once this is determined, we can select our proper tools for the job. Your fumigation company should have different fumigant options in its tool bag for different situations. 
A perfect example of a specific tool your fumigation company should have is in the picture in the upper right corner. The picture shows a stewardship training course for cylinderized phosphine applied using our HDS unit shown. A machine that should be in your fumigation company's tool bag. Introducing the fumigant in this manner can greatly reduce the risk of a fire but still allow you to use a highly effective fumigant. Phosphine is an outstanding fumigant but has its challenges when used in a pellet or tablet form. Just like when the, with the previous example, your fumigation company should be trained in all fumigants it uses, equipment operated in fall prevention training and CPR training. Fumigation is not a one size fits all approach. A good fumigation partner prioritizes safety and has all the proper tools at their disposal for safety and efficacy, and they know how to use all of them. Mitigating risks. Here's why we say again and again, pick a fumigation company that does things by the book. Let the picture at the center of the slide sink in for just a moment. Now replace the headline with your company's name and two of your associates' names. You can say that will never happen here but the grim reality is that a poorly performed fumigation with the wrong tools can have catastrophic consequences. None of us want to have our employees injured. You don't want to receive negative publicity and in today's society with multiple media channels to include social media, word travels very quickly. A properly trained fumigation company can mitigate the risk of something like this happening at your facility. Team of experts. You don't become a master fumigator overnight, and years of experience and training is the key to being a great fumigator. A reputable fumigation partner has tenure on every job site. Be direct. Ask the tenure and experience of the team that is about to perform your fumigation. Vet their knowledge of the tasks that they are about to perform at your facility. Observe the safety equipment and the protocols that they are using for the job. Now are we going to get into the details of what you should look for in the fumigation expert you select. Your fumigation company should have nationwide coverage. When using one company across the country, this helps to ensure the consistency in the service that you are provided. A nationwide fumigation company will be licensed in all states and fume categories in order to guarantee a safe and efficient fumigation. Nationwide coverage allows you and your fumigation partner to respond quickly for emergency fumigations and provide reliable service and to have that consistently high standard and standardized approach your company deserves. This also allows for access to fumigation supplies and stock in last minute or emergency situations. Your fumigation partner should also have support teams to include R&D teams, board certified entomologists, and media relations, et cetera, should that be needed. Your fumigation company should belong to many associations and even serve in leadership capacities within these associations. This demonstrates your fumigation company's relevance in the industry and shows you that they are more than likely up to date on the most recent regulations, equipment, and techniques. Again, fumigation is not a one-size-fits-all approach. Your approach will change based on the pest you are targeting, the type of structure or commodity you are treating, or even the country the product is destined for. The way your fumigation company treats a flour mill will be different from the way it treats a peanut flat or even Chilean fruit. A fumigation company partnering with organizations like the ones highlighted above allows them to keep up to date with regulatory requirements, shows they know each industry, shows they support each industry, and helps them to understand seasonal needs. By partnering with a fumigation company that has these relationships, one should rest easy that their fumigation needs will be handled safely and effectively. These are just a few examples. There are many other organizations throughout the industry.
You have heard me ask the question now several times. Why are we fumigating? I'm finally going to give you the answer. Your fumigation partner should fumigate because there is a problem. A problem that can be solved by fumigating. Well, how do we know if the problem can be solved by fumigation? Your fumigation partner should first make a positive pest ID. As Brian discussed earlier, pest ID dictates everything going forward. For example, is fumigation an effective method of dealing with the pest problem at hand? What dosage or concentration over time is required to kill all life stages of the pest in question? With an Indian mill moth, you only need to achieve about a 400 CT, whereas with a red flower beetle, you need to hit a 647 CT. And an insect like a sawtooth grain beetle, you may need to hit over a 1000 CT to achieve an effective kill. A quality fumigation partner fumigates because a pest infestation has been identified and fumigation has been determined an effective approach to the problem at hand. Another reason for fumigation to fumigate the trends in your pheromone traps throughout your facility have reached the predetermined threshold set forth in your IPM program. Or maybe your historical trending data has indicated that it would be a best practice to conduct a proactive fumigation in a certain month. In other words, your fumigation company should not be fumigating just to fumigate or just because it's the 4th of July or Memorial Day. Fumigation is only an effective tool when properly used in conjunction with other tools within your IPM program. Fumigate to solve a problem. Above is an example of a stored product pest infestation inside of a box of dog biscuits. Your fumigation partner should be able to identify the insect, in this case a drugstore beetle, by the insect and the distinctive cottage cheese-like holes that it bore in the dog biscuits. Your fumigation partner should then be able to determine the appropriate fumigant, the proper fumigant dosage and hold time for all life stages of the drugstore beetle in this case. Again, fumigate to solve a problem. If your on-site fumigation team is unable to identify an insect or root cause of the problem, they should have specialists in their network to partner with to help solve the problem, such as an R&D team, a technical specialist team, a forensic analysis team, or maybe a board certified entomologist. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this slide. As stated in the previous slide, your fumigation partner should be able to make a positive pest ID. Your fumigation partner based on the pest ID should be able to advise your facility on treatment methods and underlying hidden problems. For example, if your fumigation company positively IDs a SOCID infestation, they should reasonably conclude that there is moldy products somewhere in the facility. If an infestation of lesser grain bores was determined, your fumigation companies should be able to reasonably conclude that their fumigant method should be cylinderized phosphine in order to get a good kill with the kernel. The illustration using a kernel of corn just shows a closer look on how these stored product pests feed on food products. Pest ID is the key to fumigation method. Now Brian will take you through some best practices. Perfect. Thanks, Jake. Yeah. So there's many things a, a good fumigation partner may provide to bring additional value that are really above and beyond the basic fumigation requirements. Uh, some of these best practices can really differentiate a great fumigation partner from one that just delivers to the bare minimum expectations. So Jake and I will now kind of take you through some of these best practices. And it, it's important for you to know that there's many things you can do at the facility level to maximize the results of a fumigation and ensure the process goes as smoothly as, as possible. Um, if you are uh, planning to conduct a structural fumigation, uh, plan those weeks, if not months, in advance uh, to allow the, the fumigation company and yourself uh, enough planning time and resources to be available for a successful and safe treatment. Um, cleaning the facility pre-fumigation can really improve the efficacy of a treatment. So um, fumigants do, do penetrate 
um, to a degree, right? But methyl bromide, sulfurofluoride, they don't penetrate static material very well. Um, so with this in mind, all dry ingredient totes, waste cans, sifter buckets, et cetera, should not only be clean, but should also be emptied. Um, and then also no fumigant penetrates wet ingredient or moisture barriers. So make sure that the facility is, is dry uh, before the fumigation. If you do plan on having silos or bins part of the uh, fumigation of your facility, make sure to coordinate with your production team well in advance to plan accordingly to have those silos or bins emptied as, of uh, as much product as possible um, for an effective treatment. And then um, in advance of a fumigation, <clears throat> there's always a timeline that, that should be discussed. Um, not only for when you at the facility would turn the, the uh, facility over to the fumigation company, but then also when the fumigation company should be turning the facility back over to you. Um, really important to stick to that timeline as much as possible to turn the facility over to the fumigation company for a number of different reasons. Um, but uh, if there is a delay, sometimes additional uh, fumigant may be needed in order to reach the proper CT level, which could result in some additional costs. Um, or it could also jeopardize the timeline of the facility getting turned back over to you, which we know is really critical. Um, a, a best practice would also be to have a fumigation company provide you with a pre-fumigation checklist. This checklist provides a number of different things of who would be responsible for various tasks, timelines to get those completed, et cetera. So you know the steps to take to ensure the facility is prepared. I won't go through all of those things, but uh, we do have a few of those listed here. So um, make sure that a notification to all facility employees and contractors uh, are given well in advance of the fumigation. So there isn't anyone trying to get into the facility or on property uh, while that treatment is taking place. And then have a dedicated associate to walk the facility uh, in advance of the treatment with that fumigator that'll be in charge of the treatment. Uh, make sure that they point out any ventilation switches, uh, potential underground hazards, et cetera, and then uh, clear vending machines of all food and drink prior to the fumigation as well. So again, a lot of things you can do uh, in advance to make sure that the facility is prepared for a successful treatment. On the last slide, we talked about pre-fumigation planning. Now let's discuss different methods of fumigation application. Um, earlier we discussed briefly the HDS unit pictured in the center of the slide. The HDS unit allows your fumigation partner to keep phosphine in its tool bag without the risk of fire like you could have with pellets or tablets in large quantities. Uh, cylinderized phosphine is perfect for ground piles, bunkers, bins, peanut flats, and many other applications. Your fumigation partner should have these tools and be trained to use them when needed. Next, let's discuss methodology and how it's important that your fumigation partner has these offerings. One, it demonstrates tenure in the industry. Two, advanced methodology can increase efficacy. And three, can offer a drastic cost savings. One such innovation that your fumigation partner should offer is called a pulse fumigation. A pulse fumigation is a fumigation method specific to milling operations. It puts a high concentration of gas into the heaviest infested parts of equipment in a mill without having to use the substantial amount of gas required to do a full-blown structural fumigation. A pulse fumigation can also significantly increase dosing to equipment, a critical area of pest elimination, has a reduced flammability risk, helps maintain efficacy, and avoid the risk of losing fumigant in equipment when doing a spot fumigation. It can also be a huge cost savings when partnered with fogging. Um, you can do both of those at the same time in conjunction with one another. Your fumigation partner should be up to date and knowledgeable when it comes to the latest fumigants, procedures, and technology. Um, pictured above is one of the latest and greatest pieces of fumigation monitoring equipment. 
It is a Spectros remote monitor used for profume fumigations. Um, this technology should be used by your fumigation partner for many reasons. It shows real-time concentration of fumigant and CT achieved. A sudden drop in concentration could let you know a seal has failed prior to a huge amount of ad gas being required, which would not be possible if manual readings were just being taken every two hours. This type of monitoring ensures proper dosage and applications so that you, the customer, can verify that you are getting what your fumigation partner promised you. Lastly, all the data is stored and provided as part of the post-fumigation report. Um, next, let's talk briefly about aeration and clearance of the facility post-fumigation. Um, your fume partner should safely and effectively clear your facility within the agreed upon time frame before returning the facility back over to the customer. The efficient airflow for full ventilation should be ensured. Your fume partner should constantly monitor using the proper equipment and wear the proper PPE when doing so. For example, when clearing a building after a structural fumigation with sulfuryl fluoride, a special uh, IR should be used to monitor uh, until it's at or below one part per million. Um, obviously, zero is always the uh, is the goal, and uh, the spectros IR is pictured in the top left corner of the screen. Um, check all possible areas, including places where gas may be trapped, such as restrooms, offices, or lockers, or just common areas that gas could be trapped. Now let's turn it back over to Brian for the rest of the presentation. So Jake's done a really great job discussing some of the best practices for treatment methods, aeration, monitoring. But now, once the treatment's done, how do you validate the results, right? Um, really, one of the best ways to understand the results and efficacy of the fumigation treatment is through the post fumigation report and documentation. Uh, this type of documentation provides validation and identifies areas to focus on to drive improvement in future fumigations as well as really the overall IPM program moving forward. So um, some examples of some documentation that, that should be included in the post fumigation report um, and documentation would be um, CT target, and again, CT is concentration over time, as Jake described. Um, so you want to include that CT target, CT actually achieved, uh, weather conditions, because that can certainly play a role in the treatment and any adjustments that may need to take place as a result. And then readings throughout the treatment, so showing really the efficacy in different areas of the facility, so you know that you're getting the results that you are intending to get. Uh, another uh, way to validate efficacy of the treatment would be through utilizing bioassays. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, bioassays are uh, uh, a great tool that uh, can be used for both fogging and fumigation. So bioassays are test insects that are uh, on a card that can be placed out uh, throughout the facility before a treatment. So um, would recommend that uh, you at the facility place out majority of these bioassay cards. Uh, the fumigation company certainly can place a few of those out as well. Um, and really they should be provided uh, to you by the fumigation company. Uh, now the, these bioassays come in a variety of different uh, ways. So um, you could have adult insects, uh, eggs, um, or larva, right? So when you're um, thinking of a fumigation, you want to make sure that you're targeting all life stages. So would really encourage uh, you to have that discussion with the fumigation company to have all life stages of the various cards, okay? Um, also important for you to know to um, map out or at least document where you're placing these bioassays throughout the facility before the treatment for a couple of reasons. Um, first, um, you know where to retrieve them after the, the treatment, but then uh, secondly, um, you know if, if there was a failure on any of those test insects that you didn't get a, a full kill, um, that you would know where to adjust that treatment moving forward. Um, so great tool to use. 
And then um, continuous improvement opportunities are uh, really great to capture in this post fumigation documentation. Um, this could include, um, you know, observations for uh, improvement that the, the facility can make around uh, cleaning opportunities, not only um, in preparation for the treatment, so some improvements to, you know, pre-treatment cleaning, but also this ongoing pest prevention, best practice cleaning. Um, could be buildup in equipment or um, other voids and gaps, et cetera, that could be contributing to pest activity. Um, also, structural deficiencies would be a, a great thing to capture here as well. Um, fallout documentation uh, would be another great thing to include in that uh, continuous improvement opportunity section. Uh, fallout would be you know, significant uh, dead insect observations during that, that post-treatment inspection. Um, that fallout can really help uh, dictate where uh, future inspections should be done during the routine IPM services, but then also where to put some extra focus and attention during uh, future treatments as well. So that fallout observation is really critical. And then uh, lastly, you, you can certainly include some recommendations for treatment enhancements as well. Um, for future treatments in this post fumigation documentation. So in this last section, uh, we'll, we'll discuss comprehensive solutions and, and a, a good fumigation partner should be able to provide solutions to help protect your reputation, your brand name with your customers, suppliers, uh, or consumers really wherever you have needs. Uh, you, you want a company that is invested in your success. So we'll discuss some examples of solutions that a fumigation partner should be able to provide to holistically support uh, your pest management needs. So we've talked a little bit today about uh, the benefits of having your IPM service provider also conduct your fumigation treatments. And um, really one of the major benefits is your overall pest management program is then looked at holistically. And um, as we discussed previously, there can be a lot of continuous improvement opportunities identified through the combined efforts of both your IPM uh, services as well as uh, fumigation treatments. So um, you, you heard Jake mention in some of the earlier sections, you know, why are we fumigating? Um, one of the, the great uh, benefits of having your IPM service provider also conduct the fumigation services is you have all of the data, right? So you can use data to drive some of the decisions on how and when to fumigate. <clears throat> so on the slide here, we, we've got uh, an example of um, how historical trending data can be used to adjust treatment plans. So um, in the chart, you see uh, several years of stored product pest uh, trending data and the vertical colored lines you see on the chart would be uh, different treatments conducted at a facility um, throughout the years. Uh, the, the red vertical line there would be structural fumigation. So historically you see uh, structural fumigations conducted uh, in the middle of summer. But as you look at the, the store product pest trending data, uh, there's spikes of uh, activity towards the tail end of the year. So using the data, um, your, your fumigation partner should be able to provide recommendations like this to potentially move a structural fumigation to later in the year based off what the data and information is telling uh, telling you. So just a great example here of <clears throat> the holistic approach that should be taken with the fumigation partner. So as many, uh, a need for fumigation could arise at any moment. Uh, so it's important to have a fumigation partner that can react quickly, uh, 24-7, 365, and then really have the proper amount of fumigant on hand, as well as the people and resources available at a moment's notice. So, you know, we've talked about that nationwide 
coverage, you may not have a nationwide presence, but for a fumigation partner to have that nationwide coverage, really important because they have resources that can be pulled um, at a moment's no notice to react quickly. Um, also important to have the ability to support fumigation needs throughout the supply chain. Um, so you may have import export needs, for example, um, so having a company that has the ability to operate at major U.S. ports um, and has the proper, you know, TWIC clearance and documentation already in place to properly support those needs when and if they arise. The food industry and consumer trends really continues to evolve, as many of you know, and, and so the fumigation industry must evolve really with the consumer trends as well. And, Organic food production is, is one of those trends, right? So organic food really continues to be on the rise, which creates uh, challenges to ensure that the product stays pest free. So there's several organic treatment options available to the industry that your fumigation partner should really be aware of and be able to provide if and when the, those needs arise with organic product. And, you see a couple of uh, the solutions listed here. So CO2, heat, and chlorine dioxide would all be organic approved treatment options um, if the need uh, arises. Then uh, many of you know, proper cleaning and sanitation really plays a critical role in mitigating pest activity and pest risk. Uh, food manufacturers today are, are, are having difficulties finding labor, as, as many industries are. Uh, therefore, a good fumigation partner should be able to provide some of these basic sanitation solutions to you to assist with you know, pest prevention um, and improvement in the overall pest management program. So um, some of those you see listed here um, that could be uh, conducted pre-fumigation um, or in some instances during fumigation as well. So, you know, cleaning of roofs, um, bin or silo cleaning, uh, interior cleaning to I-beams, um, uh, et cetera. So um, last but not least, when the plant is down for a fumigation or uh, a facility, um, the, it, it's a great opportunity to conduct some other pest prevention uh, treatments or methods. Uh, for example, um, conducting perimeter treatments uh, while the facility da is down, conducting weed treatments or even cleaning up um, some exterior uh, food accumulation or other debris that could be uh, contributing to pest activity and pest pressure. Uh, it's really a great time to get some of that other uh, pest prevention treatments done. Okay, and uh, as we wrap up today, we, we really hope the information we've reviewed with you has been beneficial um, to help you understand uh, some of those key things that should be considered when you're evaluating a, a fumigation partner. Uh, we, we've summarized the items we discussed below. I won't go through uh, all of these, but I did want to touch on uh, just a few. Um, so we talked about the importance of uh, your IPM partner, um, having the ability to also conduct your fumigation treatment so that holistic approach to your pest management program is looked at. Um, it's, and it's really critical, not only to the, the program now, but also into the future to drive that improvement. Jake talked a, a lot about safety. Um, safety should really be uh, first and foremost, you know, a, a critical piece when evaluating a fumigation partner. Make sure that that company has the proper equipment, the proper training of their personnel, and is able to get the job done, uh, not only safely, but, but effectively. And then, uh, you know, we talked about the nationwide coverage and, and how that's critical to be able to respond quickly, and really also provide consistency um, across your facilities so you know what to expect. And uh, communication, we talked about the importance of communication, um, not only in advance of preparing for the treatment, but also ongoing throughout the treatment. Um, but then also, you know, having a fumigation partner that educates you 
on industry trends um, is, is really important. So you're at the forefront of, of things coming or things changing um, in, in the industry. And then um, last but not least, you know, we talked about the important role you can play at the facility to uh, prepare and uh, also ensure that you get uh, a maximum efficacy of the treatment and you have a successful treatment. So um, with that, I will turn it over to Katie now for, uh, for Q&A. All right. Thanks, guys. Um, so thank you again, Brian and Jacob. You uh, did a great job at providing us with a brief fumigation overview. Um, educating us on stored product pest biology and behavior. Uh, you also spoke to the importance of an IPM program that includes fumigation and sharing fumigation best practices. We've had several questions come in uh, throughout today's webinar, so let's take a look and answer a few. Um, the first one is for you, Brian. You just were talking about organic treatments. What experience does Ecolab have fumigating organic manufacturing plants? Great question. And Jake, feel free to chime in here too. But um, I, I think this is an area of the industry that really continues to evolve, right? Um, as the consumer trends are, are changing, as I mentioned, so is the need for the, these treatments. So uh, we have uh, certainly experience uh, conducting uh, chlorine dioxide, um, more along the lines of container fumigation, I guess, for um, CO2, but um, also a pretty, pretty um, broad range of experience with heat treatments, um, which do take uh, a, a more lengthy time to treat, um, but uh, certainly all three of those we have experience with, but again, it, it's an, an area that continues to evolve. So. Um, Jake, I don't know if you've got anything to add to that. I don't have a whole lot to add, but yeah, it's an ever-evolving um, dynamic of the industry. Um, CO2 especially is uh, becoming more prevalent, and uh, we've been doing some bin fumigations, um, container fumigations, and uh, have a couple of smaller facilities, uh, small warehouses that have been done, and um, that just continues to grow as the need grows as well. Fantastic. Thank you, guys. Um, Jake, this one's for you. You mentioned you conduct training sessions. Can you explain that a bit more? Absolutely. So we do a lot of uh, stewardship training classes, and we have uh, partners um, with the actual uh, fumigant distributors that will come and uh, do um, classes for our uh, customers and show them what the latest standards are, um, any updates to the label, et cetera, for the different fumigants that we use on the facilities or if the customer is going to do in-house fumigations, if they have licensed personnel to do their own uh, container fumigations or uh, small grain bins or stuff like that. Um, we also can do other training courses like um, I would consider this a um, just uh, informational training on the industry itself for people that are considering integrating um, fumigation into their IPM program. Great, thank you. All right, um, Brian, back to you. Uh, the, data, the data that you are sharing, how close to real time is it? This has a few few parts to it. Also, is it available via an app or able to download easily into Excel? Got it. Okay, so um, the, the IPM data, um, if that's what the question is referring to, it is available pretty close to, to real time. Um, so I would say within a couple of hours, it, it would be available through at least Ecolabs um online portal and, and digital logbook um could you repeat the second part of the question i'm sorry katie no that's okay um available via an, an app and then able to download easily into excel got it so uh currently ecolabs um 
uh, pest control information is not available via an app. Um, but it would be, you know, from any device, you'd be able to access uh, the the e logbook from uh, real time data. So, um, and then uh, Jake, I don't know if you want to speak to the the fumigation information, but that's typically we get real time readings with that um, and provide that in the post fumigation report. But that would not be available real time, correct? That's correct. So we get real time readings, but um, that's not provided to the customer until post fumigation as part of the post fumigation report. Brian, this one goes to you. We're getting lots of questions in. So <laughs> you guys are doing a great job. Um, you mentioned predetermined pest thresholds. Who determines those thresholds? Another two parter here. And then what are the different factors that determine those thresholds? Boy, they're giving lots of good questions here. So um, uh, maybe work in reverse. So um, thresholds should uh, really be developed looking at a, a variety of different factors. And I guess I, I would say no one facility is the same as another. Um, so the surrounding environment should be considered, um, the type of product made at the facility, um, and then looking at the historical pest trending information and, and really criticality of pest activity in various areas of the facility, all of that should be looked at. Um, and the more information you can look at, the better um, to make an informed decision. So um, I, now setting the thresholds, you know, my recommendation would be to have thresholds established jointly um, between your pest management provider and the facility. Um, that way, um, everyone's aligned on what those threshold levels are. And, and thresholds are, are tricky. You need to set them at an appropriate level to make sure that you're, you're challenging yourself to get better, improve the overall program. Um, but you don't want to set them too high that you never achieve it or too low that you're always exceeding it. So it's kind of a fine balance. And you really need to make sure that both the, the PCO and uh, the facility are on the same page with what those levels are um, so they can work together uh, to resolve the, the, the pest pressure that they're seeing. Wonderful. All right, let's do, I think we have time for maybe one more. Um, Jake, I know you covered this really well in the presentation, but um just once again maybe a great way to wrap this up as well how can we guarantee the fumigation was successful so i think that comes down to um, many different parts that make that guarantee up um, first is making sure the facility sanitation prior to the fumigation is the best that it can be so that allows your fumigation partner to have you know the ability to be 100 percent successful um the next thing would be the monitoring um make sure that your fumigation partner is using monitoring real-time monitoring so that you make sure that you're achieving the ct set forth for that certain insect that pest identification again coming in as a critical importance um so that way you can kill all life stages of what kind of insect is identified and then um, lastly would be Brian had uh, brought up was the bioassays. Um, you can put whatever uh, life stage of bioassay in your facility wherever you want and that makes sure that um, gas dispersion was proper throughout the whole facility. So um, just several ways to guarantee that um, fumigation is 100% successful. Wonderful. Well, great job, guys. I think we'll end it there. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for your time today, as we greatly appreciate you taking time to attend our What Makes a Good Fumigation Partner webinar. A recording of this webinar will be available on ecolab.com on our fumigation page. Address is located on the slide on your screen. You can see it right there. We hope you found the information presented today valuable, and we look forward to seeing you again um, with our future EcoLab webinars.
have a great day, everyone.